he was very, very loyal and he also gave me a lot of money. That was until this girl who I thought was my friend told him. Hey gorgeous, welcome back. Today I have a special treat just for you. I know that you've been asking for a stripper makeup tutorial and today I am going to give you exactly that. I have a special Halloween themed video here for you. I'm going to do a Jessica Rabbit themed makeup tutorial, but this like the stripper version of Jessica Rabbit because um, I used to have a Jessica Rabbit show when I worked in Perth and I sometimes dress up as Jessica Rabbit if um, I'm at a club and there's like a dress up night just because I get comments all the time from customers about how I look like Jessica Rabbit, especially especially when I'm wearing lingerie. So I thought I'd just like, kind of like as a bit of a joke, I'd like play on that. While I'm doing the makeup tutorial, I'm also going to go through some of my <laughs> strip club horror stories, some real life strip club horror stories. So let's get started. Before I begin the video, I just want to say I don't watch makeup tutorials. I don't think I've ever watched a full makeup tutorial video. So Bear with me, I'm just going to do my makeup and talk you through it and we'll do that. This is an Illamasqua primer called Hydraveil. I have been using this primer for years and I swear by it. It's like, it pretty much like hydrates your skin and um, helps prime your face for makeup. You scoop it out with this little thing and it comes out in... Um, I don't know, it's not going to focus. It comes out as a little like gel-like sort of thing. So I normally just put it on my finger. Oh, I put that on my lip accidentally. I am great at this already, aren't I? So going to wipe that on my face. So I was planning on doing like a spooky kind of video, like um, spooky things that have happened in the strip club because I have worked at quite a few clubs that um, dancers have sworn were haunted. There are so many strip clubs that people claim are haunted. It's just, it's it's insane. But um, to be honest, like, yeah, a lot of the time um, when I am at a strip club, like I can tell that there are like, there's a spirit slash spirits there, but um, they don't really do anything. Like they don't really like cause any drama. I mean, there are definitely things that happen. I feel as though like karma, like play, like is completely sped up in the like in the stripper world and like I like I know that other strippers will agree with me here because it's just so interesting the way like justice seems to get served so quick so quickly and so that people kind of like learn like learn their lessons if if that makes sense I don't really want to call it like getting what they deserve because but like I feel as though there are forces that play that kind of help people learn their lessons and help people like grow and understand what they have um done wrong if that makes sense. Now that my primer has settled, I'm going to use um, an Illamasqua foundation. It's just a liquid foundation it, and the shade is SB 3.5. And I'm just going to put it on like this. I have also been using this foundation for years. It feels super, super comfortable, feels super light, and um, I find the coverage is really good and it lasts. I'm not even sure if this is a foundation brush. I don't think it is a foundation brush, but I use it anyway. I like it better than the like foundation, the typical foundation brushes. It's um, a Real Techniques brush. I actually don't know what it's for, but I have been using this as a foundation brush ever since I can remember. So yeah, it's hard to say because it's like, you know how when people, like when, people encounter like spirits they say like they feel as though they're being watched or like they feel as though there's something there but in the strip club it's like you, you're always feeling like you're being watched so it's a bit hard to <laughs> that's hard to distinguish but um yeah I remember my club in Melbourne it was like it was a multi-level club and um there was this one change room right at the top of the club that um a few girls said were haunted and some girls like at the end of the shift so the way the club worked was um you you showed up before 11 and um when you showed up you were put um on like the roster like you're you're put on the stage roster 
and um, you couldn't le you could you weren't allowed to like leave um, without paying a fine with bef like before your last rostered stage was so the earlier you got the earlier you could leave if that makes sense and uh, like myself and some other like girls we would stay like long after our last stage long after we were allowed to go home just because like there was money to be made we didn't want to like we wanted to keep making money and um some girls who were there like right up until the end of the night like right until they clo it closed and like they were the only ones there they refused to go into that change room by themselves um i think like people said they heard voices um i didn't use that change room a lot because it was kind of like a second change room there was another change room that um i used downstairs i think it was more like a habit me using that change room more than anything um it, i never intentionally um i never like avoided the other change room or anything I, I just like found that it was easier going to the other one because it was in like a better spot yeah it's super common for um dancers to claim that strip clubs are haunted i've heard that so often but uh, yeah, I, like I said, I don't have any like legit stories myself. So unfortunately, I couldn't do like a spooky, spooky stripper stories video. But I thought I would, I would go with a real life horror stories in the strip club video instead. And I'm just going to open, open a drink. I love these. Um. Like they're made, um, like they're made during moon phases and they infuse crystals with them. Obviously this one is like rose quartz. So love having these before work. I'm going to grab highlighting brush, I think. Don't quote me on that. And I'm going to grab, this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Glow Kit sugar in sugar. I'm gonna go with Gumdrop today, and I normally do for my first round of highlighter. I normally do like down, down the middle of my face, and I will do like my brows and my eyelids. So like this. Cool. <clears throat> I'm going to get my brows microbladed literally on Monday, so um, this is literally, this is one of the last times I'm going to be doing my brows like this, so, and if you are following this as a tutorial, do your, you do your eyebrows how you normally do them, I uh, don't, yeah, I'm not going to just do your eyebrows how you normally do them. So since we were just talking about Melbourne, let's start with um, let's start with a story from Melbourne. <laughs> so I was working one night in Melbourne, and um, at this club, you could, if you're on stage and a customer tipped you twenty dollars, you gave them like a na like a mini naked lap dance on stage. So basically, just like just lasted like a minute so you pretty much just showed them your lady bits gave them like a little bit of a show um just for like twenty dollars just a short one and this guy sat down at my stage when i was there and he pulled out twenty dollars and he had two friends with him one either side and he put twenty dollars on the stage so i like to give him a little show like open my legs blah 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 and um, he goes, now show my mates your And I was like, okay, so that's an extra 20 each. And um, he's like, no, I paid 20 bucks. Show him your And I was like, no, you've, you've paid $20 for yourself. If they want to have a look, then that's $20 each. And he was like, show them your And I was like, no. And I just like, I just like turned away, kind of like went back to where I was. And it was like towards the end, towards the end of my stage anyway. So I pretty much like get off and I realize I can't find my G string anywhere. So I know that he like, when my back was turned, he like, he grabbed it and took off with it. And yeah, that was, that was a lesson that I learned. Always keep your G string like 
as far away from customers as you can. And um, I remember speaking to a girl backstage who, because I th actually, that was my first night there. That was, yeah, that was my first night at that club. <laughs> and um, I spoke to a girl backstage. She had her G-string stolen by a customer and to replace it, she had to ship it for a ridiculous amount of money from a shop in Germany. No, thank you. Keep an eye on your G-strings at all times. They already get a lot for their money. They don't deserve anything else. So now that my foundation's on, my highlight is on, and my brows are done, I normally go with the Norvina palette. Although there are a few other palettes that I sometimes use that have some great purple colours. For instance, sometimes I'll even use the Emreezy as well. So grabbing a brush, this one just came with the palette, and I normally start with a really light like sparkly color like um dreamer here and i'll just use that as like the the base kind of thing for my lids and then i go with a lighter purple color i'm going to use celestial this one here and just go over the whole lid so um this isn't so much this is this happened in when i was working in london and it was actually super super difficult for me to get hired in london i was rejected from three different clubs when i went over there which was really surprising for me um i didn't expect to get <laughs> rejected so much i mean like in australia they're like most clubs are pretty much happy to have you there they're happy for you to work there um because it's like if they hire you they know that like they have another girl on the roster and you can make more money you can make more money for the club but yeah i had three different i tried three different clubs um one was a super upmarket club and i go there and i talk to the security guard on the door on the way in and i tell him i'm there for um an interview and he's like good luck like blah 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 he was really nice um, I go in, I sit down, there's like me and two other girls who are auditioning at the same time. So we all get up on stage at the same time and we audition together. I could tell that the, the manager who was, um, who was hiring, I, I could tell that she was a bit of work. And I remember being like, this is not someone that I want to mess around with. She didn't hire me, didn't tell me why, just said, um, just told me that she... That's, that's what she said. I remember being like, oh, okay. So um, I went into like the, um, went into the toilet to get changed back into my normal clothes. Cause when you audition, you generally wear like, when you audition, you wear like lingerie or like dancer wear. I was getting changed into my normal clothes and um, I heard two other, two other girls come in because one of the other girls who was auditioning, she was auditioning cause her friend worked at the club and her friend um, like helped her get the audition kind of thing. And those two um, walk into the bathroom while I'm like in a stall getting dressed. And I hear them like talking about how she got the job and they're, they're excited. And then I hear them say like, I don't understand why the girl with red hair didn't get hired. And I was like, me neither. <laughs> no one, like, I don't know. And then I think they were like, oh, maybe she just didn't fit the look. And I was like, okay, like whatever. And I know like back then I don't look the way that I do now. Like I looked a little more alternative, even like I was, even though like I wasn't wearing like my like septum piercing down or anything, I had like different hair and just the way that I presented myself was a little different. I feel as though like over the years I have become more hireable in a way. I've become more like adapted to the industry by the way, in the way that I look, if that makes sense. So um, I can totally, like, I totally understand what they were saying, but um, at the time I was like, okay, that's weird. And then when I spoke to the security guard on the way out, the one who was nice to me at the start, I was like, oh, I didn't get it. And he was like, oh, don't worry about it. She doesn't hire girls with red hair. And I was like, why didn't you tell me that on the way in? I wouldn't have wasted my time. Now we're going to do a darker purple. So I'm going to use um, drama and I'm just going to do the second half of the lid if that makes sense but um yeah the security guard was like this club has a sister club this is what it's called you should um apply there instead and um there was a girl that he was chatting to who i could tell was a dancer and she was like yeah i work at that club they'll like they'll take you for sure 
Um, and so I organized an interview, like the net, like the next available interview. I think it was a few nights later. I can't remember when, but um, organized an interview with them. And I go there. I audition. It's just me auditioning. What's on a single pole? Like it wasn't a stage. It was kind of just like a pole on a podium in the middle of the club. And um, there wasn't a whole lot of room around the podium either. So I had to kind of do what I could when I was auditioning. I think I only I only dance for one song and they're like okay great that's enough I just use this brush and I'm just going to kind of um, blend the the two shadows here so yeah I get off and um, they're like oh I come back in a month when you've toned toned up a little bit and I like I misheard what they said. I thought they said like once you've like toned it up. And I asked, um, so like there was a manager there and um obviously just a staff member, and I asked the staff member, I was like, Oh, what does what does he mean by um tone it up? And she was like, Oh, he said tone up. And mind you, I was a size six at this point. I was I was quite small. There was not much to tone up. So I don't know why, um I don't know why like that was a bit annoying. And then um, I went to another, I auditioned at another club. I think the reason why they didn't hire me there was just because I, like, they only wanted long term dances and I couldn't give, like, I knew that I was traveling and I couldn't really give a, um, like, definite answer as to, like, how long I was going to be staying for. But um, that's fine. I ended up at another club, which um, was an interesting club I'll say that much it was very very small I and it had been around for a decent amount of time like there were three chairs for lap dancing and so that's not that's not a lot especially on a busy night like you had to like line up to use the lap room and of course you could only do like um, a few songs at a time for lap dancers you couldn't do like long bookings I'm, I'm gonna go into the Amrezi and I'm going to grab the um, BK the black one and I'm just going to put a little bit of black right on the edge of my um, eyelid it was yeah a really bizarre club and so like the la the lap rooms were like there were three um, little booths like right next to the stage so you could easily like just walk into e e any of them they weren't very private at all and once I had this girl like grass cut me in the middle of a lap dance in the middle of a lap dance I was dancing for this guy and she walks into the booking and starts talking to him while I'm dancing for him I'm going to use these, these are reusable like pads for um, like your face. I know it looks ratchet, you can obviously like get the stains out if you want, but I honestly don't care about it because I'm, I know I'm, I'm just going to get them dirty anyway, so I just use, the, like I don't really care about keeping them clean, and I'm just going to wipe away some of the fallout from this shadow. And sometimes, not always, I go over the top of my eyeshadow eyeshadow just with a little bit more um, highlighter again and I do the inner eye with the same highlighter that I used for the other parts of my face just to make that part glow draw more attention to it okay so this club in Manchester these are the notes that I have for it very dark and shadowy club, black and crimson shades everywhere. You could never tell the walls were Baroque printed unless you looked at the small space lit by the lamps. Everyone seemed out to get each other. In the office when I was doing paperwork, the manager said, if you're going to powder your nose, do it in the change room, not in front of the customers. The bathroom was full of the smell of P.O.T. I remember one dancer offering to pay for half of a customer's three minute dance. The club was usually empty until about one and then randomly it would just be full of people like not even a gradual ease into a rush it would just be, become like an attack of customers <laughs> I, I i wrote this like years ago like these are notes that i made um when i was working at the club the manager looked like the fat controller from thomas the tank engine <laughs> one girl lost her shit because she had a similar name to me and then she started carrying on about how there was only one her <laughs> this like this memory i think about all the time 
I was in the change room getting ready for work one night and these two girls were chatting because in the UK you can like bring your drinks to work and like you can pre-drink in the change room or like drink through like you can just drink in the change room that's just like what the um what the laws are like this girl like there was that you know that tequila rose stuff um this girl brought in a tequila rose and she offered some to her friend and um her friend goes oh, no babe I'm detoxing only vodka cranberry for me tonight Babe, I don't know if you know what a detox is, but you're in for you're in for a lesson. Um, there was gum stuck everywhere and holes in the dressing room floor. It looked like it was about to cave in. And to be honest, the worst thing like that happened while I was working at this club actually like didn't have anything to do with um, the club itself. I was staying at an Airbnb and I got home um, after my shift after working Saturday night, and the Airbnb host dead bolted the door to the house. By the way, I'm just um reapplying foundation to that area i rang her and i rang like I, for a while i was like look i don't know if like if i don't know if it's appropriate to ring at like 3 4 a.m and then i like thought about it and i was like i'm not sleeping on like on the doorstep and it was it was raining as well it was cold so i rang her i rang her a few times didn't answer so I was like okay looks like I'm sleeping on the front doorstep and eventually she she let me in <laughs> and that was that was not fun okay but the worst club I have ever worked at was in Brighton in the UK so I looked this up the other day because I was curious I think the club has like new owners they I don't think they've changed the name but like they have new owners that was that place was a nightmare had super super eerie vibe only let people who were over 25 inside the club and there were only a few girls working each night there was one girl who was notorious for stealing things from customers management knew about this and did nothing this um a customer had a four thousand pound watch stolen by one girl by this girl and just took his business elsewhere kind of mid shift we had to go out on the street and hand out flyers and i've worked at clubs where this this happens but not like this this was like they didn't give us a route the club is not in was not in like the safest area either we had to walk through like a lot of unsafe parts of brighton no one even wanted the flyers anyway it was like almost it was pretty much like a joke this is another makeup product that I swear by, the Na Natio Liquid Eyeliner. I don't know if you can get it outside of Australia, maybe New Zealand, but um, I have used this liquid eyeliner for years and I've never had an issue with it. So I'm going to do a winged eyeliner look. This has taken a lot of practice, trust me. Just a disclaimer. So... This is glam makeup. We strippers wear glam makeup. It's part of our job. And I generally do full glam. That's just the way that I like to present myself at work. Remember, this is a fantasy. This is performance. And often, like, I'm, I know you can see me in this setting, but you never see me, like, when I'm on stage. You don't, like, in the way that you're, like, you're, the lights hit your face when you're on stage. Like, even if you are wearing like normal makeup the just the way that the lighting works you might not be able to see like the features as well so you have to really make sure that you're wearing stage makeup because yeah you only see me like in this lighting you don't see me uh, like on the light in the lighting at the club so that's just something to keep in mind so Brighton was the last club that I worked at in the UK Obviously, I, I worked at, at, at like at a few different places, but those three cities were the ones that stood out. In regards to the subject matter for today, um, I'm just filling in um, and going over my eyeliner. Okay, and now that my eyeliner is dry, I'm going to put my lashes on. So these are the Blaze Unicorn Cosmetics lashes. I have tried them on before, but I haven't actually worn them, so I can't remember if... I cut them or if I need to cut them but I'll just just give them a go now no don't need to cut them which is good it saves me some effort there is one club in Brisbane I spoke about this club a lot in the red flags video and the one thing one thing that I didn't mention about this club was I had a few friends that I worked with at that club who 
mysteriously got their drinks back. It was always when one particular manager had friends in and um, and or like when they were served a drink by this particular manager, like served a free drink by this particular manager. Could, could just be a coincidence. But often they would be invited back to this manager's place after um, they had been served a drink. Not not saying anything, just just putting putting the facts out that you can you can draw your own conclusions out of there. So yeah, I put lashes on with my fingers. Always done that. To be honest, didn't even know that people put lashes on with tweezers. I just always used my hands. And then um, I tried with um, that Ar Ardell tweezer thing, and I think I'm just so used to putting lashes on with my hands that I just couldn't get the hang of it. So. So I didn't recognize this as a red flag at the time, but I probably should have. There was a Facebook group for um, like the dancers slash adult entertainers in Brisbane and a manager of a club in Adelaide posted in the group saying that they were looking for like dancers to travel down to Adelaide to work at their club. Obviously now I'd, be, I'd look at that and be like, okay, that's a red flag. If she can't find dancers in the home city, then there's a reason why. At the time, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'll go down to Adelaide and I'll work I'll work for a week. And that was just after I'd left that club. So I was kind of just like, you know what? I'm not working anywhere um, at the moment. Pissed off. Um, I was really frustrated with that club that I just left. So I was like, okay, I'll just work. Um, I'll just work in Adelaide for a week. This manager, when I spoke to her on the phone, she was telling me about how the venue was brand new, had just been refurbished. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, okay, great, awesome. So I fly down there. So I book flights, book accommodation, fly down there, and I'm looking for the club. And as I get to where it says it is on maps, I see that it's still a construction site. Still has a bunch of construction out the front. Like, you can't even, like, you can't even walk into the club. You have to, like, walk through a construction site to get to, like, the main bar. And I was like... I wouldn't have flown down here if it was still under construction. She told me over the phone that it was brand new. It had just been refurbished. She didn't tell me that it was still under construction. So I was like, okay, this is not off to a good start. <sighs> Ended up being a super quiet night. Obviously, customers didn't want to, didn't really want to go into the club because it looked like a construction site. So it was super quiet. Only a few customers came in. I think I only spoke to one customer all night. Um, because there were a few like regulars who came in and like immediately spoke to like their regular girls and there was one customer who um, was not a regular who came in and I spoke to him. He said that he was very put off about the construction site thing. So made no money all night. So I was like, I don't think I'll be back to be honest, like to be lied to over the phone and then yeah. I took the next night off. I just like chilled out because I couldn't get a flight the next day. So I took the next night off and then I flew back to Brisbane for that weekend. And then on um, Sunday morning, I wake up and the first thing that I see on the internet is that a very, very um, infamous Australian celebrity was kicked out of that venue that Saturday night that I was supposed to be working. I still think to myself, Man, if I knew that was going to happen, it's kind of like a famous story in Australia. Man, if I knew that was going to happen, I would have stayed <laughs> just to, to have been there to see that because that's part of history, babe. So I'm going to use the Anastasia Beverly Hills, um, I don't know, lash brag, volumizing mascara. I'm just going to add a little bit more foundation to make sure that it is as covered as possible. And then I am going to use the same highlighter I used before to do the, this area here. So I worked at a club in Brisbane that um, it was like a tradies kind of club. Tradies means like tradesmen, which um, is like builders, construction workers, that kind of thing. We just call them tradies in Australia because obviously we shorten everything. And there would often be fights at this venue. And Killing in the Name of by Rage Against the Machine was actually banned at this club because whenever it was on, a fight would break out. 
Like there'd be times where like a new girl would start and she'd request it for a table dance, not knowing. And there was like a staff member on who was like new or like sometimes it would just like accidentally get like get put on. And all of us like girls who'd been there a while would hear it and be like, oh, oh God, oh God, no. But not this song wasn't on at the time, but I was at the bar talking to a customer when a fight broke out right next to me. And this guy like who was in the fight like slammed into me and I like fell to the ground because it came so out of nowhere. I didn't even know that a fight had broken out. Came out of nowhere. I got like the like the force of me hitting the ground was really triggering for me. And I like ended up dissociating like pretty much all night. Love that for me. Um, and then I remember like a dancer like I did a we did a stage together and it was wasn't even someone that I normally worked with. I I don't know how that how I ended up doing a stage with her and she like slapped my ass really hard during it and I was like this is <laughs> this is not the time please don't so I use in a car baked mineral blush duo but burnt peach and I'm just going to put that on my cheeks now with just a blush brush so there was one club oh no my battery's running out one club that I worked at and there was a dancer house and I shared a room with one girl. Everything was fine, no issues at all until I go to leave for work. And it turns out that when I go into my, like I'd done my makeup um, elsewhere in the house and when I go into the room to get my work bag, I open the door and this huge puff of smoke comes out. She'd hotboxed the whole room, all of my belongings, stunk like smoke and I had to go to work smelling like I had been smoking. That was, that was, that was not fun. So I am going to quickly do my lips before my battery runs out. So I may not get to all of my, may not get to all of my stories, but if you want me to do a part two and if you want me to share more, oh my God, sorry. This um, is Anastasia lip primer. So good, highly, highly recommend. I always use it on my lips. Um, but yeah, if you want a part two, happy to do so, just comment below. It's probably like my biggest horror story. Um, and I'm going to use the Ruby Anastasia Beverly Hills lip, matte lipstick on my lips to get that beautiful Jessica Rabbit mouth. I had a regular at one club in Perth. And there was a girl that I was, I thought I was friends with. This regular like was pretty dedicated to me. He never really, like he would tell other girls like, oh, I'm waiting for Ginger or like, I'm here for Ginger. Like he was very, very loyal. And he also gave me a lot of money. That was until this girl who I thought was my friend told him. Okay, apologies for the slight delay. I pretty much just ended up putting on the rest of my lipstick and I used my Illamasqua setting spray hydra setting spray but what i was saying was so yeah i had this regular who was crazy obsessed with me gave me a lot of money and then one night um he comes in and he, like i knew he used substances and he was a bit um unstable he's he came in and he started like yelling at me got really super aggressive all because this this dancer had told him i had a boyfriend this dancer would have known that he would get really aggressive. This dancer would have known that he could have actually become quite dangerous. And um, I was actually lucky that he didn't do anything more than become like just simply like verbally aggressive. But the way that he was interacting with me was quite like, I was thinking like, is he going to do something? Is he going to like try and hurt me? This was a girl that I thought I was friends with and she still doesn't know that like I figured out that it was her. And she like acted the whole time like, oh, I wonder who it is. Like, I wonder who, like, are you going to find out who did it? And I remember being like, I don't know, babe. I think I'm just going to let it go. And um, just had to play along the whole time. Like, I didn't know. And just like slowly distanced myself from her. But And then all of a sudden he clung onto her and yeah. But she got her karma. She definitely got her karma. So... Thank you for joining me for this tutorial story time 
video. Now I'm ready to get my slutty Jessica Rabbit on and go make some money at work. I know that you've been asking for like a general stripper makeup tutorial. If you do want to see like how I normally do my makeup for work, comment below and I will make one. So yeah, let me know if you liked this and if you would like to see a full glam stripper makeup video. It's been an honor to have you here. And it's, this has been a really fun video to make, so I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I I love you. I hope you and I hope you have an absolutely magical day.